Hi guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I will teach you about interfaces in programming. This concept exists in most programming languages and the idea and the logic is absolutely the same in all programming languages. The only thing that can be a little bit different is the syntax. So here I'm going to show you what are interfaces and how to use them in C Sharp. And once you learn the logic and once you understand how to use them, you will be able to apply this knowledge in all other programming languages. Here on my YouTube channel, I teach you different programming concepts in these short videos. But if you're looking to really master practical programming so that you can become the best student at your university or so that you can get a job even if you don't have a university degree, well, I can also help you to achieve those goals. I have combined over 12 years of my academic experience and also work on many different projects. And I have created Code Beauty Academy, which is a learning platform. And it is designed to teach you career ready skills through a practical program that you can complete in just a few months. It has over 200 video lessons covering everything that you need to know in order to get a job. You are going to work on real projects with other developers. And step by step, I will take you from beginner to expert. Many students have joined the academy in the past few months, and a lot of them already got their first job, even before completing the entire program. So I'm absolutely sure about the quality of this program, and I invite you to try it out risk-free. And if you're not 100% satisfied for any reason, you can get a full refund. No questions asked. So if you're interested to join us, check out the link in the description and I will also include a special discount code for my viewers to help you save some money. So with that being said, let's continue with the topic of this video and let's explain what are interfaces. So interfaces are also called contracts and they are very important concept in programming. Now, in order to understand them better, let me first give you an example of an interface in real life. In real life, an example of interface is the USB port. You already know that you can connect different types of devices to your computer through the USB port. You can connect USB flash drive, mouse, keyboard, USB printer, and so on. So USB port serves as an interface or contract, which means that it defines a set of rules and whoever wants to connect to the computer, he needs to comply and implement those rules. So that contract defines things like how the connector is going to look like, what is going to be the transfer rate and speed, what kind of data formats are supported and so on. And as I said, all the devices who want to connect to the computer through that USB port, they need to implement all of those rules. So this way we can have one USB port, but we can connect many different devices to our computer through that USB port. As long as all of them are complying to that rules, everything is going to work. And this solution is very flexible. And it is much better than, for example, if every device had its own type of port. Because in that case, you would need to have a million different ports on your computer. And when a new device comes out in the future, then you wouldn't be able to connect that device to your computer because you wouldn't have that port and you would have to buy a new computer that has that new port. So we have managed to solve this problem with the help of interfaces because, as I said, an interface serves as a contract which defines a set of rules and whoever implements those rules, he can connect to the computer. So in this same way, interfaces or contracts work in programming. So a contract specifies a set of properties and methods, and then classes can sign those contracts, which means that they need to provide the implementation for all of those methods, and they need to have all of those properties. So an interface just specifies a set of properties and methods without any implementation. And then when a class signs that contract, that class needs to provide the implementation. Now, in order to understand why this is extremely useful in programming, let me show you a practical example. 
So let's say that we are building a game and in our game we are going to have different types of enemies. So we are going to have, for example, a zombie, a dragon, a vampire, and so on. Now, something that all of these enemies are going to have in common is the ability to attack and the ability to defend. Now, the way that different enemies are going to attack and defend is, of course, going to be different. So, for example, a dragon's attack power is going to be to breathe fire, and then his defensive power is going to be, for example, to spread his wings and then shield himself with those wings. Uh, and then, for example, a vampire can strike with his fangs. That is going to be his attack power. And then to defend himself, he can, for example, turn into a bat and then evade the attack. So to conclude, different enemies are going to attack and defend in different ways, but all enemies need to have the option to attack and to defend. So one thing that a programmer is going to learn from our story is that he can implement an interface. And we are also going to do that. So we are going to implement an interface called iEnemy, short for interface enemy. And in that interface, we are going to specify the rules. And the rules are all the enemies that we will have in our game, they need to have two behaviors. They need to have the option to attack and the option to defend. So now let's see how we can create that interface. It is actually very simple. So you just say public interface and here you give the name to your interface. They are usually named with the prefix I, short for interface. And then let's also say enemy like this. So we have created an interface called I enemy. And this is the interface that will be implemented by all enemies that we create in our game. So here in this interface, we are going to specify the rules that our enemies need to follow. And those are, as I already said, two methods, attack and defend. So let's say void attack like this, and then also void defend like this. So as I said before, inside our interface, we don't provide the implementation for these methods. What we do instead is we can create different classes, which means different types of enemies, and all of them are going to sign this contract, which means that all of them are going to provide their own implementation for this method here and this method here. So in that way, we can have different enemies that are going to implement these methods in a different way. But because they all have signed this contract, we can treat them all as enemy in our game. So let's create an enemy class and let me show you how that works. So for example, let's create a dragon that is an enemy. So let's say public class and I will call it dragon like this. And now I'm going to say, hey, this is going to be an enemy in my game. So this class here needs to sign this contract. So how do you do that? Well, it's actually very easy. You simply put these two dots, this column sign, and then you specify the interface that you want to implement like this. So immediately we get this little red squiggly, which says, Dragon does not implement interface member I enemy attack, and then Dragon does not implement I enemy defend, which means you have signed this contract, so you absolutely must implement these two methods. So now you can simply click on this I enemy interface and then press control dot and then choose this option, implement interface. That is a shortcut, but if that shortcut doesn't work on your computer, then you can type the code manually. So now let's provide the implementation for these two methods. So here for the attack power, I'm going to say console.writeline. And here I will say, for example, dragon breeds fire. That is going to be his attack power. And then when the dragon wants to defend, then I will say console.writeline. And here I will say, for example, dragon spreads its wings to shield himself. 
So that is going to be his defensive power. So we have created an interface called I enemy, and then we have created a class called dragon, and that class implements our interface, which means that it needs to provide the implementation for this method here and this method here. And here are our implementations. So now the question is, why are interfaces so important and so powerful? Well, right now you can still not see why interfaces are so useful and important because there is one more thing that we need to do. And that is, we need to add at least one more enemy in our game. So let's add another enemy class. I will do it here. So let's say, for example, public class and let's add vampire like this. Okay, so this is our vampire class. And here as well, I'm going to say, hey, you are an enemy in my game, so you need to implement this interface, which means control dot, you need to provide the implementation for these two methods. So the way vampire attacks is vampire is going to strike with its fangs. And then in order to defend, vampire is going to turn into a bat to evade. So now we have two enemies. We have a vampire and a dragon, and both of them implement this I enemy interface. And now let's see what is the magic of interfaces. So here in my program, I am going to create I enemy, let's call it E1, so enemy1, and here I can say, please create new dragon, like this, and I can also create another enemy, enemy2, and I can say, please create new vampire, like this. And it doesn't matter that these two are of a different type. These two are different classes, because both of them have signed this contract. Now I can treat them both as I enemy. So that means that I can say E1 dot attack and then E1 dot defend. And then I can do the same thing for my enemy two. So E2 dot attack and then E2 dot defend like this. And if I start the program, as you can see, here is our dragon enemy, and then here is our vampire enemy. So the dragon attacks like this, and then he defends like this. And then this here is the attack power of vampire, and this is his defensive power. But this is not all. Let me show you something else. So what you can do is you can create a list of I enemy, and inside this list, you can put all different kinds of enemies. You can put dragons, vampires, and then if you decide to add new enemies, as long as they implement this interface, they can be inside this same list. So we can simply say list.add enemy1, and then let's also say list.add enemy2. And now what I can do is I can simply use a for each loop in order to iterate through this list of enemies and I can send all of the enemies to attack. So let's say for each I enemy, I will call it E inside my list. So what I want to do is I simply want to say E dot attack like this. And now all of the enemies that I have inside this list all of them are going to attack. And it doesn't matter if you have only two enemies or 2,000 enemies, all of them will simply attack with this one line of code. So let's start our program and let's test this. Okay, and as you can see, our dragon is attacking and our vampire is attacking as well. And what is even better is that in the future, if you decide to add a new type of enemy to your game, for example, you decide to add a zombie, you will simply implement this interface and you will provide the implementation for attack and defend methods. And then everything is going to work. So you can add your zombie to this list as well. And as I said, you can have 1000 different types of enemies. And with just one simple line of code, you can send them all to attack or to defend. And that is the true power of interfaces. 
Hey there! If your goal is to learn programming and start a successful career, build interesting and useful applications, and if you enjoy learning from my YouTube videos, then you should definitely enroll in my practical programming course. I will take you from beginner to expert in just a few months, and I will give you all of the support and help that you need to achieve your goals. In the course, you will work on realistic projects, you will get access to a large community of successful developers, and everything that you need to learn will be on one place. You just need to follow the plan that I have created for you. And those of you who finish the course successfully will get a special certificate that is going to open a lot of job opportunities for you. In the description, you can find a coupon code to save some money. And if you're not sure if this course is for you or not, we have seven day money back guarantee, which means that if you don't like it for any reason, you will get all of your money back. No questions asked. So now, instead of coming up with excuses, use this opportunity to finally learn programming and transform your life because you really have nothing to lose and a lot to gain. So I hope that this video helped you to understand what are interfaces and how to use them. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section so that I can reply. And if you have some ideas for the future videos, please leave those ideas in the comment section as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up so that I know to create more videos like this in the future. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in another video. Bye!